and welcome to week eight of American football here on Channel 4. Well, last Sunday, for the first time since I quit kicking with the Atlanta Falcons, I returned to this stadium. I came down here to record some features to be used later in the year, certainly not expecting this game to be our game of the week. Well, I was proved wrong. The Atlanta Falcons versus the New York Giants was one of the most exciting and dramatic games we've had all year with a tremendous finish. So let's go back in time to Sunday and Pat Sumrall, who sets up the game for us. In the rugged NFC East, the New York Giants are keeping their heads above water as Lawrence Taylor is back on the loose, terrorizing opposing quarterbacks. And with Carl Banks returning today, the Giants hope to build on the momentum of last week's inspiring comeback. The schedule hasn't been kind to Marion Campbell and the Atlanta Falcons. Facing one tough foe after another, they have lost four straight. But the silver lining has been the performance of John Settle, who has carried the bulk of their offense. An offense that today welcomes the return of promising quarterback Chris Miller. These are the games Bill Parcells knows his Giants must take advantage of. But the young Falcons would like nothing more than to spoil those plans. So the Giants come to Fulton County Stadium looking for a win to keep up with the pace in the NFC East. But things didn't start too well when Phil Simms was intercepted in the end zone by Scott Case early in the game. Greg Davis then kicked this 32-yard field goal to give the Falcons a 3-0 lead. Former Eagles kicker Paul McFadden in for the injured Raul Alegre, then made this 21-yarder to tie the scores early in the second quarter. Now the Falcons have a first down and 10 at their own 21. In the commentary booth, Pat Summerall and John Madden. Falcon first down. This is settled. And with the right side, picked up two. Uh, he's, he's capable of taking over a game somewhere. Here's Miller. Gets it out to settle. First man missed. Settle gets a Falcon first down. Harry Carson made the stop. Picked up nine. I think that's enough for a first down. Gene Wang now is in the backfield with Settle. Miller back to throw it. Overthrows John Settle. Away from him. And that gives you a little extra time. Miller again rolling in that direction. This time he has a lot of time. Firing in the direction of Kennard and Stacy Bailey in the point. I'll tell you that. That's Settle back with Miller. Settle hammers a defender. Adrian White. Fort That's Jesse Hester. And that should be another Falcon first down as he was stopped by Terry Kennard. Now they go with five wide receivers. Picks back to Lang. He hammers down close to a touchdown. Lawrence Taylor made the stop with Kenny Hill. I think they just outsmarted the defense then. No, oh, they did. They don't call a play in the huddle on this, Pat. They get up there, he calls check with me. And then if there's only five guys playing to run, he's going to run that. He, uh, he, he called that play. It was an option. It was an audible that he called the option on the line of scrimmage. You see what happens here. He has the three wide receivers, one here. Now he looks at this. He decides that he's going to run the option. See, there's only one guy out there. No Taylor's coming. Get that ball out there to the line. That play was called on the line of scrimmage. Jamie Dukes, a guard, was in the backfield, and Settle takes it in. Touchdown, Atlanta. That is a big lead block. 
That's about a 300-pound lead block. Remember that started in Chicago with the refrigerator. Right. Then Jamie Dukes did the Atlanta version. And then they did it in San Francisco with Guy McIntyre. Jamie Dukes. Leads settle into the end zone. Welcome back. In the third quarter, Atlanta extended their lead to 10 with this 37-yard field goal from Greg Davis. We rejoin the action with the Giants in possession. They have a first down and 10 at their own 43-yard line. Thing. You see the numbers there, Pat? Right there is the 50 and the 40. And that number from there where Miller, uh, uh, a Lionel Manuel cuts to the sideline, you see that's the area that they don't figure is the strength of this defense. First down. And that's at the Falcon 37-yard line. Sims again. We'll throw the play, play pass. Good throw by Phil Sims. Boat down at about the 10. He was being covered by Joel Williams. Great throw by Sims. He's going to come off a bootleg here. You see, thanks to the halfback coming across, bootlegs out to this side. Wasn't going to Boat at first. He was trying to hit the outside receiver out there. Waited until Boat got in that area between the numbers and the sideline and hit him. That was the first pass. Completed to a tight end today. First and goal from the 10 for the Giants tomorrow. Straight ahead and in just inside the five. Tripped up by Robert Moore. Bill Word. Sims is motioning to the bench the formation he won. Word on Stacy Bailey from the Falcons is that he has a bruised shoulder and he may not return. That'll hurt. Hey, one thing for the Giants now, the last two times they got down here, they shot themselves in the foot. And I think this is where they have to get this one in for no other reason other than just confidence in this football team. Second and goal from the five. And tomorrow. Forced out of bounds by Moore after only about a yard. Falcons do a good job. Robert Moore and Andre Bruce is stringing this thing out because he looks like he has pretty good blocking here. But you see Moore 34. Just keep the outside. Keep the outside. Keep the outside. Don't let him get outside. Then if he can cut back, you got all the guys coming down the line of scrimmage. If he has to keep going out, you'll run him right out of bounds. Third and goal from just outside the three. Sims is going to put it up. No, he's not. Andre Bruce on a sack. That's the second time he's been down. Andre Bruce was the number one player picked in the draft this year. The first player in the entire draft. He really hadn't played that way all year. They had expected him to be a big pass rusher. He hadn't been. Harry Campbell feels he just has to get a feel of this game. We have to play with him. We have to live with him, and he'll get better. That was a big, big play. If you're saving him, you might as well save it with that position. McFadden from 27 yards right down the middle. Oh, it's 13 to 6 now. Heinz pulled three back, but early in the fourth quarter, Greg Davis kicked his 31-yard field goal to restore the 10-point margin. The Giants need to do something quickly. There are just five minutes left, and they have a first down and ten at the Falcons' 45. Sims from the shotgun. Outside, knocked down at the last second by Bobby Butler. Final manual, the intended receiver. And that'll be enough for a first down. 
Four and a half minutes left. Robert Moore made the stop. Giants quickly up, no huddle. won't show it but he has lifted this entire Atlanta team well he's lifted the crowd too I mean the people are kind of into this game we saw him against the Rams and we saw him you know, against other people last week against Denver they look like a lethargic nothing team but he comes back and you're totally different group here's Gene Wang on first down now three minutes remain Carl Banks made the stop timeout Giants. That'll leave them with one. That could be precious. Well, they only have one timeout, and of course, they'll get a timeout at the two-minute warning, so that gives them two. And I'm sure Bill Parcells is thinking that we're going to stop, so we'll get a third timeout on the punt for the change of possession. To settle this time. 
He's hit by Eric Dorsey and Carl Banks. You see that little thing there when, when Settle hit in there to Dorsey? Dorsey's a 280-pound guy. When Settle hit him, Dorsey went backwards. Giants have taken their last time out. Just watch the end of the run. There's Dorsey there, 77, coming off a block. Now watch, when he comes off the block and Settle hits him, he's spinning there. But watch that. I mean, Dorsey goes backwards, Settle by that hit. It's just a little thing, a subtle thing about Settle. He gained a yard there. Ball is at the Falcon 32, 2.54 remaining. Settle is the lone setback behind Chris Miller. bracelet for some people. Second and two. Then back to throw it. Fires complete. But a flag on the play. Stephen Baker. They're down inside the five. Pick up a 21, but a penalty marker down. It's against Atlanta. Holding number 23 defense, penalty decline, first down. First down. Butler was caught holding, and there's no question about it. Right up there on top. That's the, that's the second one of those Butlers had. Again, it's tough when you're out there in the corner. You're out there on an island all by yourself. Sometimes you have to do things like that. That'll make it first and goal from the three. Carthon in front of Morris. Pitches back to Morris. Not quite. Noel Williams. Two-minute warning now. The Giants at the one. Trying to tie it. 16-9 Atlanta leads. At Summerall, John Madden. It looked as if the Falcons had won their second game, but the Giants pressured Chris Miller. And Harry Carson, after a hit by Banks, came up with the interception. Anderson is the deep back. Anderson is in the end zone. Touchdown. Hey, a lot of fans here are cheering for that. I, I thought this crowd was pretty excited, but... Maybe half of it's Giant fans. I wonder where all these people came from. I think they're just hoping for overtime. Oh, yeah. They're going to get an overtime. Hostetler will hold. And Madden will kick. That when Carl Banks hit Chris Miller, you can smell overtime right then. The touchdown. High formation. Again, everyone down in the pits, everyone trying to stay low. Otis Anderson just getting up and over. So it's all square with less than two minutes to play. That's coming up after the break. Welcome back. With the scores tied, we pick up the action with the Giants kickoff. There's just under two minutes remaining. Evan 
Cooper. Again, he is hit hard by Adrian White. First and ten, Atlanta at their own 20. Hugh Millen is the quarterback now. Flag on the play. We'll see if we can find out if something is wrong with Chris Miller. The word is that in the follow through, he hit his elbow on a helmet. That's why we're looking at Hugh Millen now. And they're down here. You can see Chris Miller's down on the sideline, and they're checking that elbow, and it's, again, his right elbow. That's the one you're worried about. He's coming off an injury to his his left um, his left ankle. You know, it looks like they're checking the the right elbow and the right wrist. Second down. Settle. Stopped by Eric Martin and Eric Dorsey. The clock running. Well, you can see the Falcons have really made their decision. Although I'm surprised that they're going with no huddle. That they don't have to force things here. Second and 12. Millen has a pass picked off by Carl Banks, and he's in the end zone, and the Giants take the lead. touchdown run by Carl Banks and why Hugh Millen throws this I have no idea why this play was called I have no idea why they just the Giants didn't have any timeouts why they just didn't come in there work the clock try and get field position don't let them have it you don't have to force anything when the score is tied well someone had to come in and take this game over on defense for the Giants Obviously, that guy was Carl Banks. Evan Cooper again. Again, he is nailed. This time by Gugamo. Atlanta's two turnovers just killed him. That's what Marion Campbell was talking about yesterday. Two pass interceptions. Now, I don't think, I mean, in all, all due respect to, to Hugh Millen and and, and the great play that Carl Banks made, I really don't think that you bring a quarterback in off as an inexperienced quarterback off the field with score tight and have to throw on third long. First down, Atlanta. They still have those two timeouts. This happened so fast, they haven't been able to use it. Here's Hugh Miller. Incomplete. The direct Here's Millen back to throw. Saw a hat go down, but no flag. Third and ten. Balls at the 19. Millen again back to throw. Has time. Has a man open. Floyd Dixon. Tom Flynn made the stop. Less than a minute to play now. The Falcons take one of their two timeouts to pick up. to the 20-yard line to 
with Jesse Hester. This isn't over yet. Pickup of 39 yards. Hester very nearly broken. Remember, the Falcons still have one timeout. Clock running with 35 seconds left to play. Dillon back to throw. Throws it out of bounds. Incomplete. Floyd Dixon got hit immediately. Lost the ball, but it went out of bounds. That'll stop the clock. Well, he should have just thrown it out of bounds. Cause they didn't even get a yard. They must be saying now that he had possession and lost it out of bounds because they move it back even further. Second and 16 situation coming up. I don't know. I I would think they're going to look at that on the uh, review. First of back up to 27. Giants by touchdown. Hugh Millen is the quarterback. Michael Haynes, but a flag on the play. Gary Reasons made the hit. Maybe there wasn't a flag on the play. Oh, he's put it back in his pocket now. And I don't know if he's foul. Six men on the line of scrimmage. Second down. Still second down. And what the Giants want to do is, is the is the Falcons need a touchdown. They're not going to do anything with a field goal. So they want to put them as far away from that goal line as they can. Second and 21. 23 seconds remain. Miller up the field. Pass is deflected and almost intercepted by Terry Kennard. Jesse Hester, the intended receiver. 16 seconds remain. Third down coming up. Good defense here. The, the Giants have two guys there, but the, the first time the ball went up, just that. That, that could have been deflected for a touchdown, too. Third and 21. They still have a timeout remaining, however. Millett gets it to Settle. Settle hops out of bounds with nine seconds to go. Back at the 21-yard line, a pickup of 10. You know, as you say, the, the Falcons have nine seconds. They have one timeout left, but it's also fourth down. So if they don't make more than 11 yards, whether they have any more time or timeouts, it doesn't make any difference. It boils down to this play for the Falcons. But they don't have to score a touchdown on this play. Nine seconds remaining. The Giants 23, the Falcons 16. Miller gets away from the sack. Throws a jump shot. That's caught. Now can they get the clock stopped? No, there's no time. No time left. Haynes made the catch but couldn't get in. Wow. Now there's still a discussion going on as to whether there is time left. And the officials are still staying there and then they decided that Jerry Mark Bright said that's it. And he waved the officials off the field. Bill Parcells looks like he has really drained. He went through it today. He knew his team didn't play well, but at the end, they come up with the plays when they needed them. Watch Bill in here. He's just throwing a desperation jump ball up here. His team wins the jump ball. That's the good news. But the bad news is the time runs out. That's Harry Carson wrapped around Haynes and keeping him from getting in the end zone. And then some help arrived. So the Giants get out of jail by a final score of 23 to 16. After the game, I talked with some of the players. We never seemed to get the ball in the end zone when we needed to today, and we just couldn't make the play when we had them going. And we, I thought a couple of times we had them where we could do anything, but we always seemed to screw it up. And uh, But the big thing we did is that when it was 16 to 6, we got it down there. McFadden makes a big field goal. We make them still play the game, and they make a mistake, and that, that was the difference. Was the defense a big part of it? Well, you know, our defense was everything at the end. I mean, we stopped them. The interception helps, but, I mean, we did the main thing of stopping them, third and three, and, and uh, the interception, and then we 
you know, I'm proud of the fact that we took the ball and then we went right down and scored on three plays after we got the turnover. My first touchdown in my whole football playing career. So, you know, I'm very delighted. Can you talk us through that? Well, um, when the ball was snapped, the back went on a flare pattern right into the flat. And uh, it was in our game plan to take the back in the flat. And that's what I did, and the quarterback threw it. And, you know, I turned around, and here comes the ball. So I just took advantage of it and held on to it and kept my balance into the end zone. Another big interception for you. Well, it, it came at a very crucial time, and I'm just happy that uh, I was able to contribute today to uh, this win. Uh, it was a tough game, tough game. You were on the sideline, and I saw you watch uh, the Falcons, and you were you were going for them, but uh, I tell you, we're, we're very impressed with the Falcons. They've got a, a very good team. Uh, they're not a one in seven ball club, and uh, no, I'm quite impressed with them. I tell you, I think we were fortunate to win, but uh, once we tied it up there, uh, I thought we were going to win it. Uh, you know, I feel sorry for Marion because it was a tough loss for him, but uh, we made some plays right there at the end, and you know, the game's 60 minutes long, and uh, a lot can happen. I was, I, I was really proud of the way our guys came back and uh, made enough plays to win it. Glad to get out of here, though. With a win. Yeah. No game in the NFL is easy. No game is a cakewalk. And uh, for those people who think that, they're going to be embarrassed after the game because everybody has the, the ability to, to beat you on any given Sunday.